Hi y'all, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com. I hope this video finds you well and enjoying some beautiful weather. Here in the studio, the air conditioning is out, so it's like a toasty 92 degrees, but I did not want to miss this opportunity to share with you all. So I do have some fans running, in, which you may be able to hear in the background. I hope that that is not too much of a distraction for you, but it was necessary in order to keep this tutorial on schedule, okay? So today we are going to be sewing one of my absolute favorite summer bag designs. It's like a hobo, crossbody, hippie kind of bag. It looks amazing just with a tank and leggings or a t-shirt and jean shorts. It's a way to add a lot of color and style to your outfit. And then the greatest thing about this design is it folds up nice and flat and you can pack it in your suitcase. There are oodles of pockets on the inside and the outside. For this particular design, I have six pockets inside, five on the exterior. 11 pockets in total. We have a cute little tie closure there, a very long, comfy strap that you can easily customize to fit your body. So shall we get started? Alrighty, so for this bag, you're gonna have four body panels that are squares, which measure 18 by 18, and we're gonna need to notch out the tops of all four pieces and so the way that you're going to do that if you have a directional pattern you'll want that facing up and the top of this will be the top of your bag so in my case I have these sweet turtles which they go up and down or they're facing one another but I definitely want them running vertically as opposed to horizontally across the bag so I'm going to make this the top I have those two pieces facing right sides together then I want to fold that in half and align those corners and then using the cutting mat and the ruler and rotary cutter, you're going to measure in three inches from that right hand corner and down three inches from that center fold. And you'll just put the ruler at an angle there on the three inch marks and then you will cut right across that to notch out the triangular pieces from the top there. And you can save those for another project. So you wanna repeat that process for the interior as well. We're going to begin with one of the exterior panels and we want to fashion a pocket for the front and the back of that. I used four pieces of material which are nine inches high by 18 inches wide and i've pressed up the long ends of both of those i have an accent fabric here which i'm going to just stagger slightly above the exterior print to offer a little bit of detail along that pocket which you can see how i finish this other exterior pocket so I'm going to stitch across there two rows of stitching to finish and then that bottom end is still open we will close that up when we attach it to the exterior panel so you want to position that three inches from the base of the exterior panel and then I had pressed in stitch lines there this 
front pocket is going to be divided in thirds. So I want to mark that because I'm going to stitch across the bottom and then vertically here and here so that I have three front pockets. I want to go ahead and set up the second exterior panel and sew those pockets while I'm at the machine. That pocket I had already finished, so again, I'm just measuring up three inches from the base. This pocket is just going to be divided in half, so on the outside of this bag, I'm gonna have five pockets. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and stitch across the bottom of each pocket and divide as desired. Exterior panels are prepped. I'm going to set those aside and work on the interior panels. I have already placed those right sides facing and then notched out the tops. And so these pockets are crafted slightly different. I have one pre-made and I want to show you how I did that. They are crafted from a square of material that is 18 by 18. I pressed two of those opposing edges over and then I'm going to fold that in half so I have a pocket that's approximately 8 by 18 and I want to run two rows of stitching across the top of that pocket and I'm going to stagger that lip as well. And then same thing, position those finished pockets three inches from the base of your interior panel. You can divide those however you like. I want my interior pockets divided in thirds. So I have pre-pressed stitch lines so I can see where to stitch and keep that line nice and straight. So I will stitch across the bottom and then make two vertical stitch lines to divide the pocket. And I'm going to prep that second interior panel so that I can attach both pockets while I'm at the sewing machine. I have my interior panels ready with the pockets attached. Now I want to take one interior panel and one exterior panel and position those right sides facing. I'm going to align that top cutout. I have that pinned in place and I want to do the same thing with the remaining panels. Just going to pair up an interior with an exterior and align that top edge with the triangle cut out. And now using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to stitch all the way along that top edge. And then you want to go ahead and trim that up to a quarter inch and you can angle or clip those corners, especially at the V, so that that will press and turn nicely for you. And you're going to open these panels up and they are not going to lie flat because of how that V is, but everything will still align on the edges and across the base. So the first thing you want to do is align your pockets on each side. So just align the top and the bottom of the pocket so they're nice and even. Put a pin in that to hold and then go over to the other side. And 
and align that pocket. Pin to hold. Then flip that around and work with your exterior pockets, aligning the top and the bottom. And then you can align those seams at the top, okay? And put a pin on either side to hold and that should tuck under for you nice. You're just aligning the seams. And now that everything is aligned, you're going to stitch down both long ends and across one short end. I'm going to close up the exterior and leave the interior open to turn. And then once you have those exterior seams complete, then you want to remove all of the pins from the exterior and reach inside and go ahead and get the pins from the interior pockets. And then you can turn that right side out. Poke out the corners on the exterior and then Fold that over and take the raw edge of the interior and fold that inward a half to three quarters of an inch. Go ahead and press that and then you're going to stitch across that to close it up. Once you have your interior seam finished, then you're going to kind of separate that exterior and fit the interior inside. And when you have that aligned nice, then head over to the iron and just press that top edge nice and flat. After that's pressed, you can really see your bag taking shape. So the next thing that we need to do is stitch all the way around that top edge to connect the interior and the exterior. Well, the actual bag of the body is complete. Next, we need to craft the strap for this. To craft the strap, you're gonna need two pieces of material, which are six inches wide and then approximately 42 inches long. For me, that's a full cut of 44 inch cotton fabric. I went ahead and left that selvage on there because we're going to tuck that up into the strap. So that's giving me a little additional length for this design. So to craft the long strap like this, you're going to align both pieces right sides facing and then stitch down the left and the right hand long side using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then after you stitch the long ends, this should turn for you very easy because it's so wide. You just want to turn that right side out and then press it nice at the iron and fold under those open raw edges one inch and press those. Get this press nice and those ends folded in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch all the way around the strap. I have my strap nicely finished. And now that strap will attach on either end to the interior. So you want to mark center of the strap and then align that with the center interior seam. And you're going to be coming down on each side approximately three inches. You can come down all the way to your interior pocket if you need to, if your strap is longer than you'd like, 
and likewise you can go up within an inch of that top seam there if it is not long enough for you. So this is the opportunity for you to pin this in place and then try on the bag before you attach the strap to make sure that you have a strap that will fit your body just perfectly. And I am very happy with this length. So working from the inside, you're going to position the strap and that side portion of the bag up on your machine deck and you're just going to stitch a square right inside of those existing stitch lines to attach the strap on each side. That's how the strap attaches to the bag and this is what it looks like on the inside there. Now to add just a pinch more of functionality to this, I want to add a little coordinating fabric tie closure to it, which will also be pre-finished and then attached right at that center point of the V with a little X or any other kind of decorative stitching that you wanted to do there to attach that. So this little tie is crafted from two pieces of material that are two and a half inches by 20 inches. I fold it under and press the short ends and then I folded that in half and pressed, open that up, brought the raw edges inward to meet on that center press line and then folded that over one more time and just stitched down that open edge there to finish. Just position those an inch to an inch and a half inward so you can run at least two rows of stitching across there or an X. To hide that stitching, I'm going to go ahead and attach one of my labels to either side and I'm really torn here between the red or the brown. I think I'm going to go with the brown. Okay, so I'm just going to stitch down each side for that and the bag will be finished. All right, it's done. I absolutely love it. I want to say a special thank you to Suzette for sending me this gorgeous fabric. It was just a kind, thoughtful gift. She popped three yards of material in the mail to me, which I used to make this gorgeous bag. In addition to a beautiful collection of fat quarters, which we gave away last week. So that was extremely thoughtful of her to do that. If you too would like to pay that kindness forward and sponsor a future giveaway or the material for a future tutorial, please send me an email, sewinginspiration at gmail.com and I will send you the post office box for the studio. All right, so again, thank you, Suzette, very, very much. Thank you to all of you for your continued interest and enthusiasm for the channel. It is my absolute pleasure to create for you. If you haven't had the opportunity to do so yet, please give the video a thumbs up or a like if you in fact did like it. And I would also like to invite you to subscribe to the channel as well so that you can receive notifications when I publish new content. I will be back very soon with another inspired tutorial. Until then, please know, as always, the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. Have a beautiful week, everyone.